Okay, so chapter 6, lesson 3, solving equations with rational coefficients. So first of all, rational, what does that mean again, do you know? What is a rational number? Do you know, Ryan? Okay, that's, that's one possibility. Rational numbers can be a lot of things. Yep. Maybe. Anybody else know? Rational? Rational numbers would be like, guess what? It's like up on the board, fractions, not decimals. A rational number is any number that can be turned into a fraction. Okay, so today we're going to be dealing with fractions and decimals. Okay? What's a coefficient? We learned about this. What do you think? Good job. It's a number that's with the variable. So any number that we have with the variable today is either going to be a decimal or a fraction. Just the way it's going to be today. Okay? Um, let's go back and let's talk about solving equations from the last two days. If I have this, we'll try it again. How would you solve this for me? What would you do to solve this? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but what am I going to do with that three? I'm going to subtract it, right? Okay. And is my balance balanced? No. So then what do I got to do? Yep. Other side. So A should be what? Seven. Nice work. What about something like this? How would you solve this problem? Then you know. Right, because what's happening here? I'm multiplying, right? So I have to undo that. So I'm going to divide by 3 to get rid of it. Balance is not balanced. So I have to do it on this side. Now it's balanced. A equals negative 9. Everybody remember this from yesterday. Because most of our problems today are going to have to do with multiplication and division problems, okay? So just letting you know that. All right, we good to get good to go. All right, so let's try some. We're going to start with decimal stuff first. So if you want to write in your notebook decimal equations or decimal coefficients or whatever, okay, because we're going to do some with decimals and some with fractions, so then you have a little bit of both. Decimal equations. So it's going to look something like this. Yeah, we're not going to do any adding or subtract today. It's either going to be multiplying or dividing. Okay, so what do you notice about this? It says 16 equals 0.25n. What do I need by itself? I need to have n by itself. My, oh, my goal is always to get what the, what's left over with the variable. So if I have 0.25n, what am I going to do to get rid of that 0.25? Divide. Very good. So let's divide. Cross out. And then this is where, okay, I'm going to use this as an example because this is what Ryan did in his homework yesterday. And I'm going to use this as an example to show you what not to do. Okay? So yesterday, this is what Ryan did. He did 2.5 divided by 16. That's what he did. That's how he got his answer incorrect. Which I'm glad he did that so I can remember to show this. But where should that 0.25 go? Let's put it on the bottom. Okay, because it's two different problems then. This would look like this. Okay, this is how you want it set up. You want this number on the top, or in the house. Okay, the way Ryan had it set up, he had it set up like this. Okay, and guess what we want in the house then? This is not correct. Okay, so you always want to put underneath. That's going to tell you what goes where. Now I can do my math. What's that? Yeah, and somebody will do that today. Even though I talked about it, somebody will do that today. So be careful. So then I can go ahead and I can start doing my math here. Let's see. 25 goes into 160. Uh, let's see. I usually do, like, should be six times. I usually do it with, I do it with money. I always think of change. 25 cents. How many times I go into there? Six times, right? It's because four, so six. And then this would be 150. And then one, zero, bring down another zero, goes in. Is that right? Four times? That still doesn't seem right to me. I didn't move my decimal over. Duh. There we go. There we go. Yeah. See, that does not seem right because I know the answer is not 0.64. Okay. Another hint. Don't forget to move your decimal. We don't forget sometimes. Don't forget to move your decimal. So your answer is really N is 64 then. 
Why don't you guys speak up? Oh, well, oh, I did, you guys. That was what I was planning to do. No, I forgot. I honestly forgot. Okay. It is exactly what we did yesterday. Only did it with decimals. That's it. Okay. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. So 6.4 equals 0.8 M. It is exactly what we did yesterday. So if you can do yesterday, you can do today. No doubt. You guys doing it by yourself? You guys are, aren't you? Go for it. I like that when you take initiative and do it yourself. I like that. Is it easy? Well, that's good. All right, so let's see. So you want this by yourself, so you're going to take it like this, right? So it'll be 6.4 divided by 0.8. Move my decimal, right? Wink, wink. 8 should be your answer. M equals 8. Okay, that was an easy one. I was I got one more down here. Let's see. One more, and then we'll go to some fraction ones, okay? One more, and then we'll check out some fraction ones. All right. There you go. Negative 2.8 equals 4.2. 2.8 p, I guess I should say. And I'm guessing today for your answers, mostly everything is going to come out pretty decent. It's not going to be really anything too crazy long. I'm guessing it's either going to be all whole numbers or maybe something that's got a little bit of a decimal, but I'm guessing everything will end today on your homework. So no worries about that. Don't forget to move your decimal. <laughs> Let's see, so... So today is really important. You're going to have to show some work today to figure the answer out. You're going to have to do that, whether it's a division problem or a multiplication problem. Or Let's see, is there anything with decimals that? Oh, I know. I'm going to show you one more after this. Just show you a multiplication one quick. Okay. Did everybody get 1.5? Negative, don't forget your negative. That's an important thing. Don't forget that negative sign. Yep. Don't forget. All right, I'm going to show you one more quickly for here that I don't have an example ready, but I need to show it to you anyway. All right. What if I have this? So let's do like 1.3 equals u over 4. Okay, what do you notice about this this time? This is a division problem. So you got to do the opposite. So what's it? The opposite. I'm going to multiply, so I multiply by 4. Nope, this is still a decimal. A decimal that is using division this time. Multiply by 4. Any questions on this part? That's good with decimals? Okay, so just remember to move your decimals. Don't be like me. Don't be like me. Okay. Alright, let's do a fraction one quick. Yes, we're fine here. Alright, let's do a fraction one quick. So I have 3 fourths x equals 20 over 12 over 20. 3 fourths x equals 12 over 20. 
So even though it's fraction stuff, you're still going to use the same methods that you used before. Okay? So 3 fourths x, what is this again? Multiplication, right? So I'm going to divide. So this is what I'm going to do to divide. Remember, that's like my big cross out. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to divide by 3 fourths. Now I want you to think back a long time ago. Do you remember seeing any problems like this? Do you remember? They were called like complex fractions. Remember that? Okay, that's why we learned that at the beginning of the years because we needed to be able to do something like this. So now this is 12 over 20. And if you need to rewrite it out, please write it out. Divide it by 3 fourths. And then 12 over 20 times 4 over 3. And you can do a lot of cross reducing. Did you guys learn how to cross reduce last year? For them, you didn't? Okay, because I was wondering about that. I talked to a few other people. You guys, I'm assuming you did. But I, I, you did? Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure, because I, I talked to some people, and they weren't sure if you guys learned this last year, and I feel bad, because I just flew through it, because I figured you should you knew how to reduce already. Um, all right, so I can reduce by 3 this way. I can reduce by 4 this way. And it should be 4 fifths. Is that what you guys got? 4 fifths is your answer. The X. You know what? That's what X is. X equals 4 fifths. My bad. My bad. I know. I got to remember that, right? So if I put 4 fifths in there, Actually, it would make sense because, you know, for multiplication, you just go across. So if I put 4 fifths back in there, I know 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 5 is 20, so we're good to go. Yep, that's a good way to check it. Okay, let's try this one. You try this one yourself. What do you put under a whole number to make a fraction? Do you remember? Should be a one. Yep. And then some changes to the mixed number, I believe. So hold on, did you do this? Divide by negative 7 ninths, right? First thing you did, cross out. Divide by negative 7 ninths. Now what comes first? The 5. 5 divided by negative 7 ninths. Put a 1 under it. Okay? And then 5 over 1 times 9 over 7, a negative. So it should be negative 45 over 7, which should really be uh, 6 and... Two sevenths? Three sevenths. Okay? So the first number, whatever it is, has to come first and rewrite it. You can't decide which one you want to come first. It has to be the top one. Remember, it's like the top one always goes in the house, the top one always comes first. That's just the way it is. Oh, Eric. There you go. Sorry. I want to show you one more, though, but I want to switch it around a little bit. I want to go... I'm going to rewrite this problem. Oh, shoot. 
Oh, well, we'll just redo it this way. 9 equals negative 3 fourths. Can you guys see that green? Sorry, that's kind of rough. I'll do blue. Okay, I'm going to rewrite what's with this way instead. The last time, the last two times we always had that equal sign on the other side. I want to do it on this side this time. Because it's really the same thing. I just want to make sure you get the right number first. Because I know somebody's going to make that mistake today. So, 5 by negative 3 fourths. Whoop, whoop. 5 by negative 3 fourths. Now, here's what somebody will do, though. I'll, you know what? You just solve it, and I'll just tell you after that. <laughs> guys are all working anyway. Nobody's listening. I think so, too. I think so, too. Sometimes decimals are scary. Sometimes fractions are scary. Yep. 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 Anything that's not a whole number can be scary. When you know. I remember thinking when I was in high school, I was like, "Oh, fractions of gum can't do it." <laughs> now I wish I could go back and like, "Oh yeah, this isn't that hard." Like I wish I could go back and. I like angles and stuff. I like angles and geometry. That's one of my favorite things to teach. I love that. All right. So this is probably what you had to start with, right, After, before you did the problem. Here's what somebody will do. They'll do this instead of this. Why is this incorrect? What one are they going to put first then, Connor? Yeah. What has to come first, though? The 9. So if you do it underneath all the time, it's going to help you decide and know which one comes first. 9 over 1 divided by negative 3 over 4. 9 over 1 times negative 4 over 3, right? Reduce. I come up with negative 12. Negative 12 over 1. Is that what you got? Okay. It's, if it's under 1, I don't have to. It's already in the fraction. What do you mean? Been, did you do something wrong? Oh, oh, and I can't forget this. X equals. Okay. Make sure you know which one goes first. If you put it underneath, it's going to say, okay, the top one goes first, the bottom one goes second. I always flip the second. Remember, I multiply and flip the second. I can reduce crossways. Some of you maybe didn't reduce crossways, and you maybe got negative 36 over 3. Well, it can still reduce to negative 12 over 1. So even if you don't reduce, you should still get the same answer if you reduce at the end. Oh, Merrick, what are we going to do with you? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Um, I'm going to stop right there for today. And I'm